Hello, Augies Worldwide, and welcome to Ham Radio Answers. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and here today with Trevor Oman, who is our Ask Dave editor. LCSC Electronics is now a sponsor of this channel. LCSC Electronics is an international distributor of electronics parts and is a circuit board manufacturer. Please check out their websites at lcsc.com and ezeda.com. All the uh, questions that are sent to him you answers at gmail.com go to him and he collates them and groups them and brings them together so we can answer a bunch of questions at once. So Trevor, what have we got this morning? All right, Vernon, call sign W7VPL, would like to know about a cobweb antenna. Ooh, I've got one, and I like it. Um, took a dipole wire antenna and some PVC pipe and threaded the wire through the sides of the two PVC pipes like the cobweb antenna and make it work like the cobweb. I don't have a very good geographic picture of what you're doing. The cobweb antennas are square. Uh, where you take the dipole and instead of a dipole you bring it out, down, around, and back. Uh, they're not a loop per se because there is a space between the two elements. So you can think of them as uh, folded dipoles with an extra dimension on there. Um, and the lengths will be different because these antennas all react with each other so you'd have fun uh, tuning it up. Uh, took a dipole wire antenna, some PVC pipe, and threaded the wire through the side of the two PVC pipes, like the cobweb antenna, and make it work like the cobweb example. Well, um, I think I kind of have an idea of what you have in mind, Vernon. Um, all I can say is give it a try. Uh, see if it works. Do your best to get the thing tuned. Um, I think you'll find that just putting up the... Um, Putting up PVC pipe can be problematic because PVC pipe is pretty bendy. Uh, the stuff that MFJ uses for theirs is a pretty stiff fiberglass uh, sort of a tube that has a lot of strength. And even so, it's got a, uh, um, a pole sticking up on the top of the antenna and wires down to each of the arms, not wires, nylon rope down to each of the arms to keep them up in the air. So, uh, good luck with your experiments. Amita asks about a DIY antenna, uh, just a simple antenna. Yeah, 40 meter dipole. Uh, Amita from India passed the amateur exam, uh, waiting for the license to be received. How to make a simple ham vertical antenna at home by using simple tools available at home like PVC pipes, crimps, coax, hose clamps and stuff. Um, I think 40 meters is probably where you want to go. Um, for a 40 meter dipole, take 66 feet of linear space. And you can bend that around a little bit, bend the ends down and so on. Um, I think, you know, with the BITX 40 being made for 40, the new UBITX will do several bands. If you want to do a 40 meter vertical, you're going to have to get a piece of pipe in the air that's um, 33 feet, and then you'll need radials on the ground. Um, the problem with PVC pipe is it's not going to support something that's vertical for 33 feet. Um, and you're gonna to have to guy it any way you go. Um, commercial vertical antennas are quite expensive. Um, I'm assuming that you don't have a lot of space, otherwise I would say put in a 40 meter dipole or inverted V. And like I said, if, if you can't get it all the way straightened out, bring it out and then droop the ends, something like that. And you can come up with a pretty effective antenna that way. Charles asks about an attic's reflective materials effect on signal. Well, if it's metallic, you can't do it. Um, it's 
considered the chameleon loop antenna with me in the shack, my single-story home applying limited power. Um, original roof plywood sheeting has a reflective coating on the underside to keep the heat in during the winter. I'm trying to figure out from your antenna here if it's just plasticized material on the bottom that's shining, that's uh, waterproof, or if you actually have aluminum in there, aluminum foil, because if it's aluminum, you're not going to be able to put an antenna up there. Uh, if it is not aluminum, if it punctures easily, if it's not aluminum, uh, you'll find that uh, uh, you can transmit from up there quite well. It all depends on whether or not it's aluminized. Uh, you'd have to take a sample and uh, uh, take it down to your club, have people look at it and give you some advice on it. Uh, good luck getting the, uh, uh, your station going in your uh, new location. Robert asks about, or oh, Robert call sign K N W. <laughs> Robert call sign K N one W D S asks about the one twenty four foot Ultimax D Extreme antenna. Well, it sounds like somebody is uh, really uh, light, uh, come up with a bunch of names that make it sound pretty fancy. Um, 124 foot antenna, uh, assuming it's a dipole type thing, would work on 80 meters. Cover all HF bands in 6 meters, so it's probably fed with lighter line or something like that. Seriously considering the antenna. Note that for it to work well on 80 meters, it needs to be high in the air. Um, it would like to be 124 feet in the air. Uh, if you can't do that, um, get it up as high as possible. Uh, cover all the bands in six meters, but not equally well, I'll tell you that. You'll need a wide range antenna tuner and you'll need to feed it with something like ladder line. Um, I have no experience with that particular antenna. Um, I, even though it covers 80 meters, it's not going to cover all of the 80 meter band um, unless you have a really, really wide range antenna tuner and then you'll be losing a lot of your signal in the uh, transmission line due to heating. Um, you might take a look at something that's uh, 40 meters, maybe 40 meters and 20 meters. You can get a dual band uh, diode from MFJ for not very much money that covers 40 and 20 and that's where you're going to do almost all your work given where the sunspots are right now. Um, good luck with your antenna project. Sorry I haven't heard of that particular uh, antenna and can't offer an opinion. All right, Brian asks about a high impedance versus a low impedance antenna. Okay, well the thing about uh, antennas is that the impedance varies along the antenna. Uh, if it's a dipole, it's the lowest impedance in the middle and highest at the ends. So end feeding an antenna means you've got to get up to a real high impedance. He just started out in ham radio and his interest is in vintage World War II valve receivers. And got to be British here, okay. I have one of these, and he's got a link uh, to that. Both have inputs for a high impedance and low impedance in the antenna. Can you explain the difference between the two? High impedance would be like end feeding a long wire, um, or end feeding a dipole, something like that. Uh, if you have coax and you cut it in the middle, you're going to be looking at a low impedance point. Coax, by the way, is low impedance. Um, currently using a long wire connected to the high impedance input can receive some stations um, like better performance with a different type of antenna. Um, does the wire have to be a certain length? No. Do I need to worry about SWR for the antenna? Not with the receivers, no. Uh, would it benefit from having a multiband antenna? Well, uh, just a piece of wire would be fine. Do you need a ballon? No. Uh, there's probably 
um, a control on the radio somewhere that uh, antenna pre-selector, antenna tuning, antenna something. It's just a capacitor that's in series with the antenna and that can really help uh, boost uh, the performance on the two. Uh, there's nothing wrong with operating the way you're running. A low impedance antenna is generally a tuned antenna. High impedance antennas can be just long wires. Um, if these were ever on aircraft, uh, the, all of the uh, dipoles stretched from the tip of the tail down to behind the cockpit and were end fed. And so um, that's the kind of thing you're looking at. It could even take just a random length wire that's shorter than a wavelength and pick things up on it. If you're not picking things up on 80 uh, in the evening or in the morning, um, I would be thinking there's something on your radio that needs to be tuned up uh, because 80 is pretty active during those times. All right, Gene call sign N7ARO is wondering about a folded HF dipole. Well, folded dipoles are common antennas. Okay, field day this year we had a ham that showed up with a folded dipole for HF. The claim is that it will do from 1.9 to 30 megahertz. Um, no tuner required. I have right away my um, reality detector is buzzing on that one. Thought about building one or buying one. Here is a link to ICOM's version at HRO. Curious as to your opinions on this antenna. Well, remember that a dummy load antenna has an SWR of one to one across all bands. Okay, uh, and anything that approaches having a uh, really good SWR across all bands, the first thing I'm going to think of is uh, there's something weird going on there. Um, and 45 feet on each side with the maximum accessory. You're going to have a tuner in there somewhere. Going to have to. I mean, you can try it. Maybe it's got some sign of weird magic I've never heard of, but um, I think you're going to run into SWR problems on, a, on several bands. All right, Dennis, call sign K-E-O-R-P-U, is wondering about the MFJ 1984 MP antenna setup. Well, let's take a look here. He has the antenna. It's an NFED half-wave antenna. Oh, yeah, I tried. I tried that. Always have a very high noise level at S5 to 7 on the S meter. Uh, the instruction said to run a short ground wire straight to my ground rod, which I've done. I have been told by several hams that I need to run an additional wire from my ground rod as long as possible to lower the noise level on my radio. It works sometimes. It's called a counterpoise. Is this correct? And if so, why did the directions not say this? Well, the directions are for general cases. The NFED is sloped up to a tree in my neighbor's property, got a good neighbor there, and runs to a pole on the side of my house that supports my two meter vertical. The end box is about eight foot up the pole from the ground, and they have around 10 feet of LMR 400, I guess, running from the end box to my radio. Um, opinion would be appreciated. Um, Anfed antennas are a little weird. I, in my video on one of the Anfed antennas that MFJ had, it was clear that it was designed for portable use because that little uh, ballon box that's got a uh, 9 to 1 ballon uh, in it needs to be pretty close to the radio and it does definitely need to have a counterpoise. Uh, as I found in my video when I was doing this, very, very small changes in antenna orientation had major effects on antenna SWR. Uh, you may be running that problem right now. Um, keep trying on the thing. Um, I am not a fan of end fed. Uh, antennas unless they're NFED ZEPs. MFJ has some single band 
NFED ZEPs that are quite good, uh, that work really well. Uh, the thing about them that makes them single band, besides the fact that they're an NFED dipole for one band, is that the feeding system, which is very much like a J-pole, is also only working on a single band. So I'm not going to say anything definitive on this, I can, but I would suggest trying lots of different things. I would run that counterpoise directly from the um, antenna connection point uh, out to um, out from there rather than from the ground wire. Good luck with that. Well, that's all the questions we have for this session. Thank you all very much for your contributions. You can send a question to uh, ham radio answers, all one word, at gmail.com, and we'll take a look at them, see what we can do. Uh, in the meantime, please check out the uh, Patreon page at uh, patreon.com slash ke0og. Uh, there are other things that you can find at uh, www.dcastler.com support that provide a number of opportunities to make this a viewer-supported channel. Thank you for all of your support. All of you out there who are uh, great Augies spreading the word, please share the video, please like it, all that good stuff. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon, and until then, 73.